Love Talk Radio. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Red Light Sports Ramble, presented by the Red Light Sports Network. I am Troy Otradovic, as always, joined by the extraordinary Evan Watalison out in the state of Wisconsin. Evan, today we have a special guest back on the show. Always great to have Dave Radcliffe on the show. So Dave, thanks for joining us today. We're going to talk a little bit about Badger basketball and the Big Ten tournament starting today. So welcome back to the show, Dave. Hey, thanks for having me on, guys. Appreciate it. Hey, welcome anytime, Adam. From my understanding, from the last time we uh, had you on, you have a, a new title, uh, a, a different job you're doing. I want to show the listeners uh, what you're up to now. Yeah, uh, since late January, I was, have been working for the Town Daily Times. It's a, week, uh, a newspaper in kind of New Madison, Wisconsin. So I've uh, been working full-time there, um, still kind of doing a little bit of blogging here, but that's uh, pretty much what's been taking up my mind lately. Very cool. Yeah. Now, Wisconsin, they have a, a bye, so they don't play today, but they do play the winner of the Minnesota Penn State game, which I believe is in an hour, if I'm not mistaken, it's going to start. Now, looking at Minnesota and Penn State, both teams that Wisconsin has beaten lost to Minnesota once. Uh, what matchup would you rather see the Badgers have? You know, What do you think is a better matchup? Well, that's tough to say. Um, obviously, I, I like the Badgers basically against each team. I mean, they're playing on the first day of the tournament for a reason. Uh, but Minnesota has shown they have the ability to beat Wisconsin. Um, while that was on, you know, in the barn in Minnesota, um, Wisconsin had them pretty easily in the goal center. Penn State was tough to, to pull away against them on the road, pull out a win against on the road. So uh, I would lean towards Penn State, that some playmakers, you know, a noob there. Um, uh, yeah, I would say Penn State. And there's been a lot of upsets so far in these tournaments all over the place, so you never know who's going to win these games. Yeah, with that, with that, with that said, Dave, before we get into the Big Ten, uh, big upset today of uh, Seton Hall knocking down Villanova. What did you think of that game? Yeah, I actually caught uh, most of the second half of that one. Uh, I heard on Twitter that Seton Hall's running by 15. Uh, you know, Villanova went on that huge run. It was really impressive to see all the, you know, come back and stay busy and win that game. And, you know, I mean, Marquette's obviously a different team. I don't have the rooting interest in Marquette, but, I mean, that helps them kind of open it there, and maybe they can make a run in the biggest tourney now. Yeah, now, Villanova was in the talk for a possible number one seed going into the conference tournament. If uh, with Villanova being knocked off, if Wisconsin goes out and – wins the Big Ten Conference Tournament, um, did, did that door reopen for Wisconsin to be in discussion for a number one seed? Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt that they would be in a discussion. If they win that Big Ten Tournament, I don't think that locks up a one seed for them. Um, barring Kansas going on a run here, I know it's an overtime against Oklahoma State. I catch the end of they that just, one. But Kansas just won 77-70. Okay. All right. But I, I think if Kansas wins the Big 12, they an edge over uh, Wisconsin is because they also won the regular season uh, conference. They're the 12, which is arguably the top conference in the, in the country. But um, Wisconsin, if they go on a run and Kansas isn't able to win the Big 12, I think that's that one seed of Wisconsin to lose. So, well, Kansas would still get it even with uh, Embiid possibly missing uh, significant time in the tournament? That's a good point. They're in the selection committee may, uh, you know, Doc Kansas a little bit if they don't have Embiid there in those opening rounds, which, you know, I think it's fair because they're a totally different team without Embiid. Um, you know, they're struggling the games here without him. He's a fourth down low and arguably could be the number one pick to an NBA's draft. So um, if Kansas is able to still win the without him, I think that says a lot and should garner them a number one seed regardless. Well, let me ask you this, Dave. I know we still got tournament play, Big Ten, you got all the conference tournaments, the Big East, all these tournaments. But as you look at it right now, do you have four teams that you think um, that will be so, be selected as number one seeds, or do you have a group of 
teams that you think are vying for it and the tournament is the ultimate end all result and it depends on how they do. Yeah, I think there's some other teams vying for it besides Kansas and Wisconsin. I think Villanova kind of live and eliminated themselves from that to today, but if you got to look at Duke, uh, Virginia, I would honestly put right now on the, on the line. They won the which is also a tough conference. Um, we'll see how they do in the ACC tournament, but uh, yeah, there's you know three or four teams grappling for it right now, so that's what makes these tournaments even more fun to watch. Yeah, the conference tournaments are definitely fun to watch, and the Illinois knocked off Indiana today, so any chance Indiana had it going dancing is now over. Um, and, you know, I'm excited to watch the games tomorrow, especially being a Wisconsin guy. And, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing uh, Michigan, get, Michigan get knocked off, uh, you know, tomorrow or uh, Saturday. Because I, I like Wisconsin's chances. Uh, both, you know, their first round game, either against Minnesota or Penn State. And then second round, it would be Michigan State, more than likely. So I, I like their chances there. But the one thing that does concern me, I want to get your take on this, and it seems like throughout the eight-game win streak Wisconsin had, they seem to have a hard time in closing teams out. They've built up a couple big leads during the game, and then they can't quite keep the door shut. You know, they let Penn State hang around. They let Purdue hang around. Um, They got down early against Indiana before they took Indiana out. It seems like they have a hard time closing out games that they lose focus or something. Is that a big concern that you have for them? Yeah, I would say so. It's certainly a concern. Um, as fun as Wisconsin has been to watch this year, uh, they've also been kind of painful to watch in a way. You know, they lost five or six there. And like you said, those games where you think they have a hand against teams like Purdue or Penn State, they let those leads slip away. And I think that's because of a couple of reasons. One reason is because they just aren't the same defensive team that they usually are under Bo Ryan. You know, Jeff Gosher is obviously one of the best defenders in the Big Ten, if not the country. When you, you pin him guy, who else is there left to defend? You know, Jackson struggled guarding other point guards. Decker is not where you'd like him to be. Um, and then Kaminsky is uncomfortable guarding away from the hoop. So teams are able to get in the lane, penetrate, kick out, and that helps the teams get back in the game pretty quickly. And Wisconsin is very good offensively. Um, they still will on those stretches like they did last year where they, you know, buy a basket, which is just hard to fathom considering the offensive power they have this year. So um, I think that comes down to a couple factors, and that's why you just you know if Wisconsin could make a deep run, you know, they have the ability to. They could have to get knocked off in the second round. So um, that's something they certainly uh, try and pinpoint, I'd say, during this conference tournament and kind of working on closing out teams. Well, I, I think, Dave, you brought up two things that I, that eventually I want and I'm sure we'll touch on during the rest of the show. Defensively and then offensively, I mean, it's, it's pretty general. But your point was teams penetrating the lane, kicking out. When I watched the game against Nebraska, very evident of our weakness to guard in the paint. And Evan and I had talked about this on Monday. The teams that seem to give the Badgers a struggle are those teams that have really solid point guards that get off the dribble well and can drive the lane because we can't defend the paint. How do you think we can fix that? Because it's been a glaring weakness, and that was a huge weakness during the losing streak. How can they fix it in the Big Ten tournament going into the NCAAs? Well... Like I mentioned with Gosser, he is, even though he's coming off that ACL injury, is an incredible defender. It locks down, you know, the opposing team's best players. He did it with Stauskas. He did it with Gary Harris from Michigan State. Um, and I know he was on Petaway. Petaway still got his in the Nebraska game, but, they were, you know, he still struggled and had the type of game that he normally has when he kind of got his towards the end. But I think you honestly have to look at putting Gosser on the opposing team's guard best ball handler no matter what. Because Jackson, I mean, some people come up with some big defensive plays, but he's very inconsistent on that end for whatever reason. And uh, I think you got to, you know, also look at helping and just kind of hoping that the team doesn't hit down as many three points as you'd rather, you know, keep a team taking a six or eight foot shot and let them take a 20 foot shot. I think it starts with putting Mr. out there on that point guard um, and just kind of letting him 
shut down that area of the team and see where it goes from there. <clears throat> now, you know, you brought up uh, a guy that I kind of want to get your opinion on, and that was uh, Decker. Now, it seems like since Big Ten play has started, you know, Decker's had a couple days where he's gotten his, but for the most part, he's been very non-existent, especially against Nebraska. I think the Nebraska game, I think the third or fourth straight game that he did not score double double figure, and the defensively, he just looks very uninterested in playing defense. What do you think his his big problem is? And if he doesn't turn it around, does Wisconsin have a shot at making it past opening weekend? Well, I think to put, to put it bluntly, he's overrated, and that may sound harsh, but. Um, there a lot of hype surrounding Decker, whether it was fair or unfair, coming into college, and a lot of that was because of, you know, that play he had in the in the, in the tournament final there with that point shot running away. But, you know, he was the Badgers' best player last year as a freshman. Uh, there's no doubt about it. The senior class just wasn't what you'd like to see out of Wisconsin. So coming into this season, that, you know, that pressure was on him, that ex- the expectations were and other players around him, you know, kind of surfaced like Kaminsky. And, you know, Gosser, Brooks still strong. And those two freshmen come, Hayes and Koenig, while Decker's just kind of stayed the same. And, you know, to be fair, when you play the Orion system, it's hard to be a star. You know, it's based off, you know, team, not individual. And when you make a mistake, you get pulled for it. And that's been the case with Decker. You know, when he makes mistakes on defense, Bo won't stand for it. And he'll be pulled out of the game. He's done against Nebraska. So, you know, kind of hard to go on a run when you know, you're always swinging the ball. You can't really always go to your go-to player in the offense. So I think there's a, a lot of reasons. Um, the star is if he's able to put it together and, you know, get his 20 points a game, whatever, uh, that would be uh, well for the Badgers making a run here because I think they really do need Decker to play better than he has been playing. Um, just because when the Badgers will go on those lulls, they need a player to step up and Decker has that ability to do so. Well, I agree with you there, Dave. So just during that, uh, Go ahead. So just during that non-conference stretch, it's like he was the best player on the team, and then the conference play started. It's like, where is he? Yeah, and I, I think we see it evident every game. And, Dave, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but we have, and I think you kind of touched on this, we do have, and I'll call it star power, that there's a number of guys that can step up and get us out of those droughts. It just seems like when somebody goes in a drought on our team in the second half or in the first half, we started some games a little slow too. It's just almost like a domino effect. You know, if Decker's not hitting his shot, it seems like Brust isn't hitting his shot. Kaminsky isn't hitting any shots. Nobody is, is stepping up. Uh, do you get that same feeling when those droughts occur? And is there any way to... To, to get through that. I know one time I we were on Twitter and it was about Brust and I had never seen him shoot so bad. He couldn't hit the broad side of a barn. The problem was he was taking shots and you let the shooter shoot out of it, but Decker wasn't stepping up. Kaminsky wasn't stepping up. It's like when somebody's having a bad lull, it seems like the whole team goes into that. Am I just crazy or is that something that you're seeing also? No, it is kind of strange it's contagious when one player goes cold it kind of goes to the rest of the team but uh as far as brush is concerned i don't mind him when he continues to shoot when he's cold because he's the best on the team and he's going to shoot his way out but more often than not um but when he does get cold and chucking up those shots you'd like to see a little variety someone else kind of try and take over like you said with decker or the one thing that really is me about Kaminsky for his great is that he gets a lot of open look on the three-point line. He gets to let that fly because he's an incredible shooter for being a seven-footer. And he's shooting, you know, I think like 40% from three or something like that. I'm maybe a little high on that number. But, um, you know, I'd love to see Kaminsky kind of be a little more assertive on the offensive end. He's been better as the season's gone on. And then Decker, of course, you know, people are always waiting for him to take over and I think he puts that pressure on himself that he needs to do as well. So, and then Goff, they're also a great three-point shooter. So I think, you know, I know guys pat good shots to get great shots on this team. But when you're in a cold streak like that, you can't just let the clock always walk down to five and then chuck up a, you know, tested 18-footer, I think. You get an open look and you're struggling a bit from the field, you got to take it. 
No, I'm trying to get a steal. I think kind of you know, one of Troy's questions here. You know, you brought up. You know, it's not the same. Uh, you know, Paul Ryan's defensive team in the past, and, and you know, since, even since Dick Bennett was in Wisconsin, Wisconsin's been known for the hard nosed man-to-man defense, uh, lock, locking people down. Now, what do you think the big issue has been with this team this year, playing defensively? And do you think Bo Ryan? It seems to be his stubbornness to play man defense, and that switch to his own could come back to hurt them. Once again, this year. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure how I feel about running his own defense. That's just me being a traditionalist, a Wisconsin supporter. But, but yeah, as far as defense is concerned, kind of struggling, I'm not really sure it is. I just don't think they have, you know, those guys like they're kind of recruiting. They're recruiting better now, but it's more on the offensive end. With Koenig, he has a lot of work to do on the defensive end. And when he goes in that, you know, he is giving up a lot of penetration. I mean, Jackson, you know, has his issues as well on defense, but nothing close to Koenig. Um, and Kaminsky is not your traditional big man. He, well, he'll protect the paint there, you know, now and, and, you know, teams will bring him out a lot of time out by the three-point line. He's not able to do that. And then Decker, so it's just not, you know, as part of a defender as you'd like. So those guys, all of their strengths are offense, not defense. And while Bill preaches defense, um, you know, it's only so much you can work with. There's only so much you can only get so much better there. So, um, you know, it's more fun to watch. Obviously, but the bad, you know, putting up 100 points on an opponent here this year and averaging around 87 points a game. But defense wins championships, and you know, while they've shown the ability to shut teams this year, like Virginia earlier in the season, more often than not, it just hasn't been there. Yeah, I, I I have to agree with you, Dave. It doesn't matter what sport. You know, I was a soccer coach football, basketball, in the end, you've got to play defense. And that's been my biggest concern about this Badger team. You know, I gave Nebraska all the credit in the world on Monday. They came out, had a great game plan. They could keep taking it to the hoop, and they kept doing it. We played no defense in the lane that game, so I gave them credit. But as a Badger fan, it irks me because I don't know what team is going to show up. Because if they don't put up the points, I'm not sure if this team defensively can just turn the light switch on and play that great Wisconsin defense we're used to. And that's my biggest concern about this team. With that said, Dave, for the Badgers to make a deep run in the NCAA tournament, if you had to say one thing, what is the one key that's going to have to happen for them to make a deep run? Um, Sam Decker needs to play better. I think play simple. For his, I mean, you can look at other players like Kaminsky and huge with team success, but um, he'll get in foul trouble. Staying on the court is also a big key, I think. Um, so I would look at that, and I'd also look at Decker. You know, just you know, managing to stay on the court because he's always been showing that he's not afraid to take him off the court. He can rely on other guys to score. Um, so those guys, if they can get Going offensively, you know, that makes up for some of their deficiencies on defense. And while, you know, they've, been, they've struggled to hold on to lead, they've been able to build the lead, and I think that's the most important thing in the first place. As long as they're able to hold on to those in the end, I'm fine with it as much as it may, you know, give me a heart attack in the end. <laughs> um, <laughs> There's been a few you know, of those. I think that needs to play better, and I think – go ahead. Well, I was just going to say there has been a few of those this year. Where you see a twelve point lead, well they had a they had a nice lead against Nebraska in the second half. And then all of a sudden they, they get that cold streak and they couldn't play the defense, and there's that frustration I talk about. So uh, I just hope they can put it together in the tournament. But go ahead, finish your thought, bud. Um well regarding those uh leads that they'll blow, I think every team, you know, goes on their runs. Football is just a game of runs, this is how it is. Coaches can use their time out to stop those runs and stop momentum, but you know, the Badgers aren't the only team that are going to watch, you know, 12, 15 point leads go down. That's just the way it is, um, even the teams, which goes back to my point of how crazy it's going to be during the tournament. Anyone can beat anybody. Um, so I think the Badgers kind of fall into that mold. And, you know, they've had a great season. You know, we can't really harp on them too much. They've lost six games this year. They have a chance to be a number one seed. It's one of the best 
seasons we've seen in recent memory for the Badgers. Um, so there's some issues to iron out, and I think those will be addressed. Um, which, you know, it comes down to execution in the end. Now, Selection Sunday coming up, and, you know, I, I'm not going to sit here and say Wisconsin's going to win the Big Ten tournament, but I think they have some, you know, really good matchups to get to the Big Ten t- title game. First is, um, who do you see winning the Big Ten tournament? And secondly, where do you see Wisconsin ranked on Sunday when the parents come out? Well, that Michigan State game, potential Michigan State game, I should say, in the semifinal really scares me. I know it's kind of the thing to say, like, oh, Michigan State, you know, they're going to go on their run. You know, Izzo hasn't been to the Final Four for four years, so they're due. But I think there's yeah. something, too, that honestly, um, that team can be the best team in the country when they're totally healthy and, you know, get back in the groove. So if Wisconsin can win that game, which I have my thoughts about, I think they will be, they'll be on their way to the Big Ten tournament title. I'll get that one seed. Um Otherwise, you know, I don't think they can do worse than a two. They'll be in Milwaukee. Um, it should take walk through those first two rounds. Past that, maybe another win. I think that if they get to the final four and even win the national title, honestly, why not? But um, I think they could bow out in the semifinals against Michigan State in the Big Ten tournament, and that shouldn't be a reason to be concerned that they can't make a huge run in the tournament, but uh, Michigan State does concern there. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, Dave. Michigan State always seems to go on a run about this time of year. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, guys. I'll tell you what. I'm okay with them losing in the second round of Michigan State or the second game in, against Michigan State. This is why. All these times when they go through and win the Big Ten tournament or get to the final, they usually go poo the bed when they get to the big dance. And so I'm okay with them getting out early. May, you know, again, I'm just an idiot with an opinion. But every time I see them go, hey, they're playing great basketball. They got to the Big Ten championship game. They won the Big Ten tournament. Well, then they go to the NCAA tournament. It seems like they poo the bed then. So I'm okay with them going out early because I think they've got a good team. And And I don't necessarily think that they have to go all the way to the championship game or win the Big Ten tournament to to be have high confidence going into this tournament. Like you said, Dave, they've had a great year. Despite the fact that they had that little mini losing streak, I still think that this team, the good Badger team, can make a very deep run in the tournament. So I would not be concerned at all if they lost to Michigan State. I'd be okay with it. But what do you guys think about that? Is it is it troublesome if they do lose to Michigan State for the team psyche? What do you guys think? You can go ahead, Evan. Okay, well, for me, it depends on, you know, how they lose. If it's, you know, if they go out and, you know, they have a game like they did against Nebraska or a game like they did during the uh, the losing stretch they had in the middle of the season, I would then be very concerned. You know, if they're, if they're uh, you know, not, you know, their defense just completely falls apart and they can't guard anybody and, if, if if that's the reason why they end up losing either tomorrow or uh, Saturday or Sunday, if that's the reason why they lose, then I'll be concerned. But I, if they, you know, let's say lose to Michigan State and it's a hard fought game and you know Wisconsin, you know, looks pretty good, then I'll be comfortable going into the NCAA tournament. But if they lose the way you know a number of their games have been this year then I'll be gravely, gravely concerned. Yeah, um, beating Michigan State at the Cole Center in the year was kind of what got the Badgers out of their slump, uh, so to speak. And back, but back then, Spartans were also missing some key talent. We saw Gary Harris go like 3 for 20 from the field. So if they were only able to beat the Spartans by two points back then, um, I kind of doubt how they'll do against them on a neutral court with them fully healthy. The Badgers are playing better basketball now, but... Um, I agree with Troy's point. Honestly, though, going on those runs in the conference tournaments, they're you know going to help your seed a little bit. Um, but I don't know what is when they do go on those runs. They're just not the same team in the tournament. And you know, as long as they're you know lose the right way against Michigan State, and you don't see some of those same issues pop up. Okay, I'm all right with the two. I agree with you guys. And uh, as long as they get a two or three seed there, I don't 
think it makes a difference. It'll be just fine. Yeah, well... Yeah, now, a question I have for you is kind of changing, you know, to another state school that's in the, uh, you know, clin- you know clinched the spot in the NCAA tournament. You know, what, you know, like, you know, you know, you know Milwaukee is looking like a 14 to 16 seed. If they get matched up against Wichita State in that first game, could we possibly see the first time that a 16 knocks off a one? Uh, that'd be pretty amazing. <laughs> I mean, this would be the year for it to happen, wouldn't it? Milwaukee looked pretty darn good in the tournament. Um, what I think would be even more cool would be if they got squared up with Wisconsin in the first round somehow and played in Milwaukee. <laughs> I think that would just make for quite an atmosphere. I know that outnumber them by quite a bit in the in its department, but uh, yeah, I don't know if we're going to be a 16 to beat a one, even if it, it is Milwaukee. Uh, Rob, you know, he's coaching the tournament before and led that team to a victory while well, it was a ways back. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's exciting to see Milwaukee in a tournament, though. Um, Green Bay might get left out as a result of it, but uh, that was exciting to watch Milwaukee win it, win the Horizon League tourney. Yeah, I you know with the with the seating, it's it's always fun for the NCAA tournament, and this is just kind of more personal. I know we're Wisconsin fans, Dave, but when you're watching a tournament, I, I'm a guy that I'm always cheering for the lower seed to win. I don't care how it screws my bracket up, but I always like to have the upset. When you're watching, what is your mindset? Do you like the upsets? Or are you more of when you do your bracket, you're like, hey, I want my bracket to win? Are you or do you like the upsets? I'm all about the upsets, baby. Give me the upsets. <laughs> bracket comes secondary. I mean, as much as I love rooting for the brackets to be right, you know, I'm still happy if I get that. I'm always rooting for that upset pick, especially if I pick it in my bracket. But either way, I'm fine with upsets. And usually my bracket is trash every year anyway, so whatever. Yeah, well. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'm pretty much the same way. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, there's one team. But is that pretty much the same way? I had Kansas winning it all a couple of years back when they were playing. I think it was Northern Iowa, and I think it was the second round. And even though I had Kansas winning it all, you know, I'm still pulling for uh, Northern Iowa to pull off that upset. Absolutely. I'll, I'll tell you, if if anybody's doing bracketology and they're doing their bracket, you want to watch my bracket because I'll tell you what'll happen. Whenever I pick Syracuse or Duke. Either one of those to go to the Final Four, they're going to lose before the Sweet 16. Or they'll lose in the Sweet 16. It happens every year. So I despise both those programs. I love the coaches. They're great coaches, great programs. But every time I pick them to do well, Final Four, win it all, whatever, they let me down. So if anybody's listening and you're doing a bracket, check out Troy's bracket first. That'll tell you how far Syracuse and Duke are going to go. Because if I have them lose, they'll win. Do the opposite. Yeah, do do the opposite <laughs> for those two teams. It they they screw up my bracket every year for the past four years. If I pick them to win, they lose. If I pick them to lose, they win. So you just want to pick against me on that. I thought I I know I got way off topic on that, but seconds. I thought it was pretty cool since we were talking about brackets. But any last questions for Dave Evan? We're just about ready to wrap the show up. Well, I guess the way too early uh, question, because we don't even have, because I know it's all about matchups once the tournament starts. Now, without, you know, my opinion is not really that one team that you're going to point to and say they're winning it all like you had last year at Louisville. If you're looking at the teams that are going to be in the tournament, you know, who do you have winning it all in the way too early? 60 seconds. Oh, honestly, I like to see it uh, once the brackets come out, usually to make my pick. I've been to Florida all year, though, especially now that they're healthy. Um, so I would, I definitely have them in the Final Four, if not winning at all. And I think Creighton could also make a big run just because of the shooters they have on that team, and McDermott can do it all. So that team scares me, even though they've had some bad losses this year. Those are a couple of teams I keep an eye on. I'm not too sold on Arizona. I like Kansas as long as it beat healthy. Um, yeah, I guess Florida is my way too early pick you now before I see the brackets. Yeah, same here. I I think Florida right now. Um, Florida and then I don't know why, but I just see you know good old you know our good old buddy uh, Thomas, getting his guys go on a, a deep run in the tournament. I I can see them uh, 
probably be my number two choice between the you know the way too early you know who's going to win it all pick. Yeah, I, I'll throw another team out there. I, I mean, I know they're in the Big Ten and they're rivals, but um, I, I've got uh, you know before the seedings come out in the rounds, I've, I've got Michigan maybe going and doing some damage. Um, you know, I haven't. You know, I, I've watched them a lot. I just there's something about them. They just find a way to win. Uh, they've got a grit to them. Uh, I just I'm in, I'm impressed with what they did this year in the Big Ten. So. Um, I might be jumping on their bandwagon, but again, it all depends on the seating guys. I mean, we got to see what happens after Selection Sunday, and see where where they decide to seed people and where they're going to put people. But it should be another great tournament. And I know Evan, you and I got to talk about how we can set up a bracket for the Red Light Sports Ramble fans to get into. Um, I know I haven't brought it up to you yet, but I thought I'd throw it out now. But Dave, as always, I appreciate you coming on the show. I'll that tomorrow, pre-show. Yeah. I've, I've always uh, appreciate you coming on, Dave. So anything you want to let the listeners know before we end our show? Um, well, other than, you know, my website, wgtimes.com, if you ever want to check that out. Uh, we do a pretty good job of covering area there. And I've also just started writing for Reviewing the Brew. It's kind of a blog site through the Sports Illustrated fan site website. So I'll occasionally uh, write for them, too. Other than that... Uh, yeah, looking forward to the tournament, and I really appreciate you guys having me again. No, we love having you, Dave. Yeah, I look. Yeah, I'd love to get you on to get your take. Uh, you know, a little closer to uh, towards the end of spring practice for Wisconsin. I'd uh, love to get you on a little later for that too, if you're up for it. Yeah, absolutely. Just let me know, guys. Oh, we Pretty will. Cool. We, we hold everyone when they say they want to come back. Guess what? We hold you to that, Dave. We even held Brady Papinga to that one. <laughs> we will get you back on. you And I, I, I've told this to any one of our guests. Once you come on the show, you are now stuck with Evan and Troy for the rest of your life as long as we're doing our show. So you, you're one of the ones. You're not getting away from us. You can't run and hide because we know where to find you on Twitter. Hey, that's fair enough. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> with that said, everyone... We hope you enjoyed the show. Always a pleasure to have Dave Radcliffe on. It's nice talking to you, Dave. We'll talk to you soon. With that said, everyone, enjoy your night. We'll see you at the next red light. We'll get back at you tomorrow.